preaching Jesus is out of many reasons. When you read the Bible, in Philippians chapter 1, verse 15, it says, It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. Here the Bible gives three reasons why people share about Jesus. Say some share Jesus because of envy, others because of rivalry, and others because of goodwill. And they says in verse 16, the, la the latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. And verse 17, the former preached Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. In verse 18, but what, but what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true motives, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. Praise be to God. Some people preach this same Jesus that we preach out of false motives. Other people preach the same, same Jesus out of true motives. But regardless of the motive behind their action, they are preaching Jesus. The most important thing is the willingness to act, being ready to be used. Sometimes, out of your inability, you may not be able to know all that I know. But if you can use what you know, then you are able. Ability is not being able to do what I do. It is being able to do that which you know. Ability is not doing what I do the way I do it, but doing what you know the way you can do it. You don't qualify to become able by doing what I do. You qualify to become able by doing what you know. Don't wait until you know what I know for you to begin testifying of Jesus. Testify of Jesus with the limited knowledge that you have. Any knowledge about Jesus can lead a soul to heaven, can convict a person, can cast out a demon. Any level of knowledge as capacity to resist the devil. When we advance in knowledge, it is not when we get capacity to deal with the devil, but we are able to do more for the kingdom. Do not despise your level of knowledge. It is a good thing to desire my level of knowledge, but it's a bad thing to despise your level of knowledge. Have a desire to know more than as I do. Have a desire to imitate me, but never sh should you despise what you know. Because what if I know too much and I don't use it? It is equally irrelevant. If you know so little and you use it with conviction, it will bring greater harvest. God wants you to use the maximum and the minimum in your 
disposal. Don't wait for something for you to represent Jesus. Represent him with what you have. From the very beginning, God used to ask people, what do you have in your hands? We know for you to cross over the Red Sea, you require a port. You require a ship. But if you don't have one, maybe you require a log of, or a big size of a tree. But if you don't have one to enable you to cross over, God is asking you, what do you have? And the Moses answered, I only have a stick. Everyone knows that a stick can float or can be taken by water. A stick cannot oppose the direction of water. Every stick must follow the direction of water. Then he says now, what we have cannot manage what we want. But God told him, what you have is sufficient. The knowledge you have is sufficient. You despise it. But it can save your neighbor. It can save your father. It can save your children. It can save your husband. You don't need too much than what you have. If you only you can use what you have, you will see that it will provide greater things than you expect. I know many of you are waiting for a time when you become like me. But that time may not come. For the two of us are different. I am myself. You are yourself. The two of us can never become exactly the same. You can borrow from me and do a few things as I do, but you will still remain to be you. Your approach will be different. Even all the pastors that are coming from this church, their approach to ministry will be different. They will embrace intensive borrowing, but they will never be exactly like me. If you can understand this and be who you are, you know, God put you in that office and he did not put me there because he knew you would do something in that office. God put me here and he did not put you here because he knew I can do something here. Whichever area you are, even in the market, make use of that opportunity to magnify the Lord Jesus. Praise be to God. In Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, in Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, the Bible says, we will turn this responsibility over to them. I'm reading from verse 6, the second part. And we will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. And what happened? The Bible says in verse 5, this proposal pleased the whole group they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. Many of us are full of faith, but we are not full of the Holy Spirit. Others are full of the Holy Spirit, but they are not full of faith. For you to be a balanced believer, you must be full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. For it is the Holy Spirit and the faith that works together to rescue those who are perishing. Praise be to God. And the proposal pleased them. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Paminas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. Verse 6. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. And verse 7. So the word of God spread. God wants us to do something this time. Amen. Amen. Through us, these were seven men, but we are more than 50 people today. But the word of God must be seen spreading. In the market, share Jesus. Share about the power of the gospel. Tell them, in our church, the lame walk. The blind can see. Cancer is cast out. Tell them Corona is a thing of the past. Let them know the power of your God. Tell them in our church, every witch and wizard is silenced. The Jesus we believe in is the Jesus of the gospel. Hallelujah. 
we in this church know it is no doubt that we are walking as men under authority and power. Share this same Jesus to the people. Tell him, tell your customers about Jesus. Tell them that their problems are too small if they present them to the capable Jesus. Let them know that they can deliver, their womb can conceive. Let them know that their relatives can be healed. They only need to come to the men and the women who walk and are full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. And the news about Jesus can be spread without your, your, your participation. If you only intervene and tell them they will speak, you don't have to go to every village, but tell every villager. There are villagers who will come to where you are. Villagers will come to your office. Villagers will come to your hospital. Tell them they can carry the news to their village. You don't have to walk to every village, but let the news about Jesus spread to every village by contacting and connecting to the villagers who come to see you. Praise be to God. And we shall see miracles after miracle after miracle. So the Bible says, and so the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly. Everyone say rapidly. That is to increase in high speed. Against the normal speed. Against the ordinary speed. It increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. 